Our work evolves. And over time, it becomes less careful, less anal, less conscious, and more a reflection of the truth of our soul. What's the DNA of a writer? People are so fascinating. I, I, I don't know that I've ever met someone who is not possessed of the most surprising story and life experience. And the only people who don't know it is the person living that story. They take them, you know, people take themselves for granted. They tell a lesser version. They have these sort of, they, 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 they don't see themselves the way I see them or the way you might see them. Um, I think the DNA of a writer is so deeply anchored both in this life experience ancestrally in every sense. Um, there's a wonderful quote by Ben Kingsley. And I can't remember it precisely, but it's something like, our work evolves. And over time, it becomes less careful, less anal, less conscious, and more a reflection of the truth of our soul. And I think that's really the journey of an artist. It's there, but it needs to be freed. It's like carving the David or letting a wine mature. And it's like, as we grow into what we do and we relax into it and we have the confidence that we don't have to, we're not thinking from the neck up so much. We're finding the truth zone, right? Um, I think we spend much of our life mastering something, becoming really good at the craft, whatever that is, whether it's a creative pursuit or not. But then in time, you just cross this sort of invisible threshold where it just, you start taking deeper cuts. You trust yourself. That's when it gets really interesting. What's the difference between writing as a hobby and writing as a career? The difference between a hobby and a career as a writer, it's a choice. Um, and sometimes that choice is conscious and sometimes it's not. There may be someone who, you know, who, who, who is a hobbyist who's as serious and, and devoted and, and possessed by the act of writing as anyone else. They may lack the commitment to do what it takes to make a career out of it. And there are a lot of people who think it's a career, but they haven't, you know, like what's the measure of a career? Well, the measure of a career would be superficially, are you earning a living doing it? But it would also be, are you really getting the appreciation acknowledgement? Are you forging the relationships with the people who really constitute that community in a meaningful way? Or are you an outlier? Or not an outlier, but are you, are you an outsider who's really not knocking on those doors? Um, I think there are so many brilliant stories that get lost to us that are important because people don't knock on the door because they're, they're more content in the safety of it being a hobby. They may not refer to it as the word hobby, but not really. And I, I think there are a lot of artists who need champions. They need people, they need a Sherpa, they need a guide. You know, one of my early heroes was Max Perkins and Max was a man of letters. He was a brilliant writer himself, but he was also most of his adulthood, uh, and the, the single best editor in my view of the, in, uh, the 20th century in America. And he was the father figure who discovered um, and nurtured and launched careers uh, for Faulkner and Hemingway and Ring Lardner and Thomas Wolfe and just the list goes on. Um, and a lot of these creatives either would have, there are a lot of instances, I won't get into the particular stories, but they're, they're, Faulkner might easily have never come to Hollywood. He might never have had certain of his books published had it not been for Max. And the same probably is true in varying degrees with certain of his other illustrious clients. Um, so I think it's sort of a, you know, it's, it's hard to adjudicate at what point people have the constitution to really take it into their own hands and say consciously, I'm going to be disciplined. 
I'm going to find my way in. Or I'm just going to be a soloist and enjoy the act of writing. And there's a lot of gray in between those two. Um, I think the first thing is just to recognize the phenomenal joy, if that's your, if that's true for you, right? Like for me, I'm a natural writer. I'm not an author and I'm not a screenwriter. I'm a writer. And they're different. Um, I take enormous joy in writing. It's one of my happiest moments of the day. Um, but I don't see that I'm a professional writer. I think my, my, my marketplace skills are better. Uh, I'm, I'm better as a producer. I'm better as a fire starter and a facilitator and an organ orchestrator um, than being, and I'm a very good editor, but I'm, uh, I don't think I'm a screenwriter. So it's kind of knowing yourself and how far you want to push it. And do you have the gumption to do so? If we were going to break down the day of two screenwriters, so one who is, quote, waiting to be discovered versus one who, as you say, leverages their entertainment career, what would those two days look like? Oh, gosh, very different. Um, now, they may have equal levels of discipline or lack of discipline when it comes to how and when and where they write. I mean, some writers, it's like they're early morning writers or they're nighttime writers or whatever is their sort of biorhythm creatively, right? Uh, and do they do that consistently? And do they block out a certain number of hours? And do they hang the same gone fishing sign on the door so the family knows, leave me alone, right? Um, so those are all one, sort of one category of, of um, discipline and decision that a creative makes. One is self-responsible, makes a decision to be self-responsible. Like it would be great to have an agent, but it's not essential. I'm still going to make it. So I'm going to be intentional and I'm going to allocate a certain amount of my brain and my, my heart and my consciousness and my time to having a plan. I'm going to build my own plan. I'm going to say I'm going to dedicate anywhere from 30 minutes a day to an hour a day to two hours a day on my career versus the hours that I spend writing, which is about my craft. I'm going to have a vision, a plan, long term, short term, in the next month or you know, every month I want to make these kinds of measurable steps forward. I want this to happen in six months, this to happen in 12 months. And you may or may not hit those marks, but the intention, the entrepreneurial sort of energy of, yeah, there's this other rail, this other track that I'm going to pay attention to and, and, and respect as much as I respect the greater amount of time that I spend with the actual writing. Um, and it's gotta be consistent. It's like an athlete when you're training, you know? It's, you've gotta be, um, you've, got, you've gotta be a bit rigorous and say, you know, what do I, what do I need if I'm gonna succeed? You know, if, if my manuscript or my screenplay is not gonna chew off its own head in the drawer while it gathers dust, what do I need? I need a team. I need to know people. I need people to uh, collaborate with. And I need people to, you know, who are, b before I need them, I want to have the relationship with the people that eventually I'm going to need when I have a new project ready. Who are those people? Uh, and then make it a point to build out your, I mean, there's nothing more important than just, I, I, I don't really love the word networking, but that's what it is. It's saying, I need, I need my village, I need my tribe, I need my team, whatever that looks like. And I'm not talking just about a representative. I mean a real community of people that are my, my creative collab. So Twitter, going on Twitter, being a part of... Writer organizations, writing. whether they're on social media or separate from social media, absolutely. Uh, where do I get immerse myself in that conversation so that I can get feedback, so that I can find resources, I can share resources and opportunities. And if I want to introduce someone to someone else, it'll be a generosity that's well received and reciprocated. Yeah, put yourself in that flow when you're not in your writing space. I think it's, and, and, and not just, and not just with other writers. Um, I think it's important 
that you color outside the lines and that you be a little bit imaginative and daring, not just with your writing, but in your choice of, uh, you know, we talked about this before. Most writers uh, uh, think in terms of agents or producers, either representation or who's going to get my help, get my project produced. And that's all wonderful. But there are all these other people out there that people aren't knocking on their door and they're available and they'd love to talk to you and share their wisdom. So why aren't we reaching out to the line producer, the casting director, the cinematographer, et cetera, et cetera. There are editors and other writers that you can glean inordinate wisdom from and have real fun with. Uh, so I think that, you know, it doesn't always have to be specific, you know, like a specific result or goal that you want to achieve. It's just saying my greatest currency is really being a part of this community that is the film and, and, and TV enterprise, right? I, I need to walk the streets of my community and know my neighbors and be able to talk to them and be welcoming of them. And what if you're shy and maybe they're not welcoming of you? I don't believe for a moment that they're not welcoming. I do believe that a lot of people are shy. And, but that's, you know, being shy is not an excuse not to succeed. It's just not. Um, it's hard, but I've had, I can't tell you the number of people uh, that I've coached over time who come back and go, oh my God, I had no idea. This is like, you know, the Red Sea parting. I didn't know it was so easy and so much fun to meet people. I thought it was scary. I thought there was a monster in the closet. I thought these were fire-breathing, weapon-wielding, terrible, terrible people who didn't want to know me. And, and, and it's like, oh my God, I just forced myself. And it was very uncomfortable. It was extremely awkward. I didn't like it. But I forced myself to do uh, for one week what you suggested. And I'd make two calls a day for a week. And by that Friday, it was like, oh my gosh. There was one person who was too busy. There was one person who had some attitude. But eight people welcomed me. And I'm going to be speaking with most all of them again in another week, just the way you taught. And it's, it's, it's I, I'm not taking credit for it. It's just like, it's, it was just like a push. Go jump in the water. You're not going to drown. Flop your arms. You're going to swim. May not look beautiful the first time. But it, it doesn't take long before it's like, oh, you let your shoulders down and say, you know what, I can let go. I can lay down the stories that don't serve me. And a lot of people have that story that, oh, I'm, it, 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 there are two sides of the coin. I'm too shy. I'm introverted. I'm not comfortable. It's scary. I don't want to do it. And the other side is they don't want me to do it. They're not friendly. They're not welcoming. Uh, I have, or I have no value and nothing to contribute to the conversation, like I'm subhuman. And those stories are just stories. They're not real. But we only learn by doing. Uh, that may be an exaggeration, but I really believe that doing is the way we learn fastest. And if you pick up the phone and force you to do something that's really not native to you, that's really actually quite audacious, uh, and you do it a few times, it's suddenly, it's like public speaking. Everyone says public, more people fear public speaking than death. Were you afraid of your TED talk? Um, I, I was always horrified of public speaking. I actually enjoy it now. Um, the things that you worry about, uh, no one else is worried about. It's crazy because we think we are the universe, but no. Um, people are rooting for you. We see that all the time in performances, whether it's public speaking or, you know, singing or whatever it might be, athletes, you name it. We want people to win. If you can just lay those stories down long enough to take some action, you grow a new muscle very quickly. It's not terrifying. It's actually... Um, appreciated and it's the fastest path to from A to B.